Praise God. John 3. Verse 18. <laughs> Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. In John 3, 18. He who believes in him is not condemned. Isn't that wonderful? That means you need to follow him. That way, if you not only believe in him, you follow him and you live in him, then you're not going to be condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. This is what's going to bring con uh, those that are going to be condemned. That light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be what? Exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen and that they may be done in God. Again, those who practice evil hate light. How many know that the Bible is light? That's why we've got believers that say, I believe, but I don't believe the Bible. Now that's pretty wild, isn't it? Is everybody with me? So we have those who say that they believe, but they don't believe the Bible. So that if they don't believe the Bible, they don't believe the Word of God. And if they don't believe the Word of God, they don't love light. I want you to understand that we are in the end time. These are the last days. And the Word tells us that there will be many proclaiming to be Christians, prophets, and teachers, and all kinds of things to that degree. But you must, be, you must understand that you are hearing this and you are here now because God has called you to be an end-time watcher. That means not only are we called to be end-time watchers, we're we called to be end-time exposers. That's our calling. End-time watchers. But there's got to be a place where we get cleaned up ourselves before we can express what God wants us to express or else we'll be condemned ourselves. So again, there are those who practice evil which hates the light. They hate the word of God. They hate righteousness. They're not followers of Jesus. These are condemned by God. And, and because there were so many condemned by God already, he came to expose their deeds of influence and raise up watchers that they could see into darkness to rescue many. Does everybody understand that? See, a watcher sees into darkness. We see into darkness. If you're not seeing into darkness, then you're not fulfilling your call. Amen? End time watchers. We have night vision. In fact, we have a teaching called night vision. In Romans 8, Everyone say, I'm a watcher into the darkness. So don't be watching everybody else's fruits when you're a stink. Amen. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Again, he explains this. Who do not walk according to the flesh. Amen? But according to the Spirit. Now that's phenomenal. And we've heard this over and over. But this is because in the end time, in the latter days, we are seeing many things that are occurring. And we are to be very watchful. The Bible tells us that we are to be alert and consistent. Why? Because the adversary of the devil is seeking whom he may devour. But first he uses you, then he lets you get devoured. 
See, I'm going to call this, there is a difference between a biblical Christian and a cultural Christian. There's a difference. Because the cultural Christian pursues self, the biblical per, per, uh, Christian pursues God. In other words, we, we live to please him. Not only that, I'm going to explain in this area that we don't get to the place we, we, we don't get to the place of what God is, we want to who He is. Amen. So it, in this, we see that those who are living according to the flesh, according to the world, not only do they set their minds on the world because they live according to the world, they are cultural, what we call Christians, cultural Christians. Their focus is for building their own self, their empire, and their will. But in one hand, they say, I'm a believer, and I want to do God's will. But saying you want to do God's will and doing your will makes you a cultural Christian. Amen? There's an area where those who have genuine faith in Christ and those who do not have genuine faith in Christ. There are those who truly trust in God and those who truly don't trust in God. So we have those that are biblical Christians or cultural Christians pursuing the God. See, there are people, I'm going to explain this, there are people who pursue the God they want instead of the God who is. That's the difference between a cultural Christian and a biblical Christian. Because we pursue the God who is, the world pursues the God they want. Is everybody okay? It says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemns sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So it cannot be fulfilled until we decide to walk according to the Spirit. And those who are led by the Spirit are called what? Sons of God. Amen. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And we know that those who live according to the flesh cannot please God. Then if they live according to the flesh and know that they can't please God, then they're called cultural Christians, what we call carnal also. And there's a difference. And they're going to be very surprised. Is everybody okay? That's also in this arena, it's a cultural religion. See, this is what's being influenced by the world, by the unseen realm. Thinking that we can do whatever we want and get away with it. Just because we say that we're a Christian and we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's deception. Ephesians chapter 5. End time watchers. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5 and verse 1. Therefore be what? Imitators of God as dear children. It didn't say become God. Amen. We're to become imitators of God as his children. In other words, we're to express him and allow him to live in us and through us. So we'd be doing the things that he wants us to do, right? Not what we want to do. It says, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet swelling, smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be what? Named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. 
For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God and Christ, right? Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Oh, that's called a end time watcher. But expose it. You know, one of the things I want to share with you, because this is something the Lord gave me, very, very powerful, and I heard this today. It's kind of like fatal attraction. He said, my people either attract darkness and demons, or they attract me. And I, and I brought it upon, how was that? And he gave me all kinds of things. How we dress, what we do, how we smell, everything. We're either attracting evil or we're attracting light. One or the other. I saw all kinds of things. I thought, my gosh. How people have no idea of what they're doing that's drawing demonic activity out of hell because they're attracting it. He said, my pe my, even my own people are, are attracting evil presence. That's not, man, that's called fatal attraction. Amen. Because the end of it is fatal. So there are things that people are doing, people are saying, people are dressing, people are smelling. All kind, I saw all of these things in the spirit realm, which is drawing and attracting demonic presence. See, we want to be attractors of God, not attractors of men. Attractors of God. When we change our focus to that degree, things begin to change. Why? Because we don't want attention on us, and we don't want to draw attention to us. We want to draw attention to Him. Amen? Praise God. And eight, verse 11, it says, no fel Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. First, we've got to expose it in ourselves. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep or who are blind. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, but not as what? Fools, deceived, foolish, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are what? Evil. Therefore, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is and what is pleasing Him. Are we attracting Him or are we attracting demons? Amen? So we're to be exposers of darkness. We're to be exposers. See what is the influence. We're to see these things. We are in an end time. People are being deceived left and right and going from following Christ, the following self, from a Christian, biblical believing, they're being swayed out to become cultural believers. And they compromise. Their heart really isn't after God. Their heart is after the world. But they can say these things, but you'll know them by their what? Fruit. Psalm 127. So is God's presence going to expose evil? So if somebody that is practicing evil, okay, now let me share with you. So many people don't even, they think practicing evil is witchcraft or cursing or fornication or whatever. Practicing evil is anything that is not a faith of God. Amen? So if a person is actually doing those things, if they're truly not trusting God all the way, one of the things that they're going to, remember they say if they're practicing evil, they hate light, right? So one of the things they're not only going to hate, they're going to hate the word of, they're not going to believe in the word of God. They won't like that, right? They're not going to believe the word of God. They're not going to believe the Bible. 
and they're not going to want to get in God's presence. Does everybody understand that? They do not want to fellowship. Why? Because they walk in fear because of what may be exposed in them. In Psalm 127, is everybody there? We'll start at verse 1. Unless the what? Unless the what? Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Right? Unless the Lord guards the city, the what? Watchman stays awake in vain. Now that's very powerful. So you and I must allow the Lord to build the house so that as we are called to be watchmen, we are not staying awake in what? Vain. Because then you're not really seeing what you're supposed to be seeing. Amen? The only thing you're, we're, we're looking at is we're becoming a watchman of our own house instead of the house of God. And it's different. 2 Timothy chapter 3. End time watchers. Second Timothy 3, verse 1. We'll look at we've we've seen this before. Let's speak it. But know this that in the what? Last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Those are cultural Christians. They have a what? Form of godliness, but deny his power. Hi, I believe in Jesus, yeah. No, I don't read the word. No way will I get in God's presence. Hello? That's a cultural Christian. That person is actually lost. They're actually lost. Why? Because they're living outside of salvation's truth. Remember, we're to keep one eye on God and one eye on your enemy. But both hands on him. It says this, For this sort are those who creep into households and ministries and make captives of gullible men and women. They load them down with sins and they lay, 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 lead them away with what? Various lusts. Fatal attractions. they always learning, but are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, they can never be truly set free. Why? Because their agenda is still a part. See, anything that's a part of us is still left. Are you with me? God doesn't touch. And that puts limitations. Anything your hand and my hand's in, God's hand's not in it. It's not until we take our hands out and allow his hand to do it. That's where he builds it. Then when he says, put your hand here, it's not because you did, it's because you were told to do it. Because if it's by his command, then it's backed by heaven. Anything that he says, he backs. Anything that he doesn't say, he don't back. Amen? That's why all kinds of stuff is going on. That's why all kinds of things. Are, that's why people are being exposed left and right. And I'm going to tell you this, there's going to be a lot of exposure coming. Why? Because God is getting ready to pour out more and more of his presence, more of his glory, more of his weapons, more strength. He's going to expose more. He's going to allow people to see more and more into the spirit realm. Things are about to happen. Oh, glory. And I'm excited. <laughs> glory. Everybody okay? End time watchers exposing events times, seasons, evil agendas, Satan's kingdom. <clears throat> Amen? Satan's kingdom. We are not cultural Christians. We are biblical Christians, spirit-filled Christians. There's a difference. Luke 17. Luke 17, verse 22. Cultural Christianity is associated with the soulish realm. It's all about feeling. Soulish. Is everybody with me? Everybody understand that? It's soulish. Biblical Christianity is spirit. 
It's kingdom business. It is, it's not led by how we feel. We're not out to please man or to maintain the pleasing of God. Luke 17, verse 22, let's grow for it. Then Jesus said to the disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look here, look there, don't go after them or follow them. For the, as the lightning that flashes out of the part under the heaven shines to the other part of under the heaven, <clears throat> so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the, in the days of the Son of Man. Now, of course, the days of Noah, we know that in that period of time, the reason why God destroyed the earth is because the angels that put on flesh came into the world and took women, produced offsprings, and for four to five hundred years, this continued. So what was less, what left was Nephilim. And I want you to know that they're back. That's what you call aliens, flying saucers, technology. Those are all Nephilims. They're back. There are no aliens of other planets. These are demons and fallen angels. They're called Nephilims that have taken the technology and they're deceiving mankind. They're also producing hybrids. They're taking and abducting people, putting their seeds in them to try to create their own race. Some of them still are living in the earth. They're called greys. Some of them are in the second heavens. Some of them look even human. Hello. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now look at this. Likewise, it was also in the days of Lot. Well, the days of Lot was filled with what? Sodom and Gomorrah, lust, fornication, homosexuality, everything. It was almost like the days of Noah, wasn't it? They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down and get, take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not come down. In other words, tighten up. Hello? Tighten up. Get out of the world. Get out of a cultural Christianity. Amen? <laughs> you know, we see here now that um, the days of Lot and Noah, uh, there was much influence of demonic. There was evil presence, the, kind of the Nephilims, demons, hybrids, humans possessed, lust. Look at all the technology. Look at all the influence of music, video, and communications. We got CERN that has, that, that, that's been shut down by God, thank God. But they did open a port. Amen? And, it was, and, and actually that place where they built CERN in Switzerland was right over the temple where the place of, uh, what's his name, um, in the bottomless pit. Um, hallelujah. Actually, it was, called, it was actually associated with Nimrod, Apollyon. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Right over they built CERN. Why? Because they were trying to raise him. Does everybody understand this? No, CERN is a, a hydro collider and, and what it does is it takes the particles because they were searching for the God particle. They were trying to find creation. But they were trying to open dimensional ports. That was their purpose, to allow the dark matter in. And that's a whole other thing. Anyways. So we see that, um, that there's, there's, now we've got open bathrooms. Hello? Flip a coin, go to the bathroom, any one you want. Hallelujah. So we see that there's open bathrooms, there's open sex, there's pornography, there's a loss of moral standards, there's exchange of God for materialism. 
there are individuals willingly selling their souls for fame and fortune. Amen. These are, we are, I mean, it is getting worse out there. Demonic activity is increasing influence. You can sense more and more pressure on everyone. In Romans chapter 1. Verse 16. End time watchers. Do you qualify? God is qualifying end time watchers. Verse 16, what does it say? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith, which is spiritual sight, isn't it? You hear what God says and you do it. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. Now I want you to understand that he's, not, he's, he's also talking about a race of fallen angels. Nephilims. And then what was carried on afterwards. Because they knew already, didn't they? Watch. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without what? Excuse. Because although they knew God, so they knew God, didn't they? They did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful and became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than creator, who is blessed forever. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. That's why you have half-breeds, half-animal, half-human. And these are demonic spirits. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God or truth in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. So anyone who approves of them is also deserving of death. So they will be judged the same way. Amen? So we've got many cultural Christians that are okay with same-sex marriage, homosexuality, open bathrooms, all kinds of things. They're okay with these things because they are cultural Christians. They are connected to the world. They are not connected to God. Remember, one of the things that the enemy is trying to do is disconnect. He's trying to disconnect. That's why there's that falling away. Amen? Praise God. Let's continue. Um, let's go to, uh, uh, what is it, verse 20? Where are we at? Two, one? Oh, snap, we're done. Now listen, we are again a generation of Noah and Lot. 
we're called to see into the darkness because we are end time watchers. Again, we have night vision. Amen. The word tells us something very, very powerful. And I want to go to Ezekiel 33. Is everybody there? In verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, When I bring the sword upon the land and the people of the land, take a man from their territory and make him their watchman. When he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself, but he who takes warning shall save his life. But if the watchman sees a sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, a sword comes and takes away any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require on the watchman's hand. So again, as end time watchmen, one of the things we want to be able to do is begin to expose the things that are going on. What in the area of times, seasons, feast of the Lord, amen? Blowing the trumpet, we are a generation again of the time of Noah and Lot were called to see into the darkness as end time watchers. I want to share something with you very prophetically because blowing the trumpet has to do with your mouth. Amen? Has to do with your mouth. Now, I want you to also know that it's no coincidence at the time that we're in now that the next feast to be fulfilled is the Feast of Trumpet. Amen? And there's a man that's running for office called Trump because God is going to use him to expose the wickedness in the political arena. In fact, he's unveiling it now. God is using that man. People don't understand it. God has called that man to expose. In fact, the word Trump is also associated with triumph. But Donald means ruler. There are many things prophetically that God is using right now. Why? Did he's calling and time watchers so darkness can be exposed. Look how long the political arena has been used by Satan's kingdom. Look at what they're approving. Look what this administration has done. It is the most wicked and evil administration we've ever had in history. Its purpose is to bring down this country and usher in the Antichrist. But God has another plan. And he's raising up end time watchers to expose and to prevent things from happening because there is going to be an enormous harvest. Things ain't done yet. What may look evil has nothing to do with me and you because we're the light. As long as they stay connected with the light and not become a cultural Christian and allow the evil to penetrate, God will protect you, bless you, prosper you, and be on your side. This is a warning for a nation. Amen? Ezekiel 3. This is personal warning. So there are no stoolies in the kingdom of God. There are exposers. Hallelujah. There's no undercover agents for the kingdom of darkness. <laughs> Amen. Although there may be some, who knows. But those who are true end time watchers expose it all. They see into darkness. Ezekiel 3, in verse 16. 
Now it came to pass at the end of the seven days that a word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require on your hand. Yet, if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Again, when a righteous man, oh, snap, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because you did not give him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered. I want you to know. Because, see, we build treasures in heaven. When you break covenant with God, those are removed. But by his mercy, you can start over again. But everything that was saved is removed. Does everybody understand that? But his blood I will require on your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous should not sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took warning. Also, you have delivered your soul. That's the personal warning. Amen? Go to Jeremiah 6. Jeremiah 6, 16. Is everybody there? Thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old path where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not listen. Many people don't take warning. They don't take warnings. Therefore, hear you nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth. Behold, I will certainly bring calamity on this people, the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not heeded my words, nor my law, but rejected it. For what purpose to me comes frankincense from Sheba, a sweet cane from a far country. Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet to me. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall, fall on them. And the neighbor and his friend shall what? Shall perish. Again, those not listening to the trumpet. Amen? They're not listening to the warning. Does everybody understand that? It's time. Again, you and I are to be the ones that are warning wherever we go. That doesn't mean you're going to look for God will bring that person across your path to warn. I'm getting calls from all over from people I haven't spoken to in years. It's amazing. I'm getting more and more calls from people. I'm like, whoa. This per and, and it's like, you know what? And the Lord's sharing with me. Warn them. Warn them. In fact, they're calling because they remember they were warned. And because they rejected the warning, they fell into the pit. And now they're crawling out. In Jeremiah 51. Jeremiah 51. Remember, the world is considered as Babylon. It's a Babylonian system. In verse 6 in Jeremiah 51, it says, Flee from the midst of Babylon, and every one save his life. Do not be cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He shall recompense her. 
Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunk. The nations drank her wine. Therefore, the nations are deranged. They're deceived. Babylon has suddenly fallen and been destroyed. Wail for her. Take balm for her pain. Perhaps she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go, everyone to his own country. For her judgment reaches to heaven and is lifted up to the skies. The Lord has revealed our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make the arrows bright. Gather the shields. The Lord has raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. For his plan is against Babylon to destroy it. Because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance for his temple. Set up a standard on the walls of Babylon. Make the guard strong. Set up the what? Watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. For the Lord has both devised and done what he spoke against the inhabitants of Babylon. And you who dwell by many waters abundant in treasures, your end has come. The measure of your covetousness. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, Surely I will fill you with men as with locusts, and they shall lift up a shout against you. He has made the earth by his power, has established the world by his wisdom, and stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he utters his voice, there is a multitude of waters in heaven. In the heavens, he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rains and brings the wind out of his treasures. Everyone is dull-hearted without knowledge. Every metalsmith is put to shame by carved images, for his molded image is falsehood. There is no breath of them. They are futile, a work of errors. In a time of their punishment, they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is a maker of all things. And Israel is a tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. You are my battle axe and weapon of war. For with you I'll break the nations in pieces. With you I will destroy kingdoms. That's why he's calling me and you to be end time watchers. Amen? And Isaiah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, I like that one. Okay. Praise God. Let's go to Isaiah 60. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Isaiah 60. Glory, glory. In verse 1, would you speak it with me? Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Hello. It's going to cover the earth. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And deep darkness, the people. Well, we see that's happening already. But the Lord will rise over you. And his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light. And kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and what? See why? Because we are what? Watchmen. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar. Your daughter shall be nursed at your side. Then you will, shall see and become radiant. And your heart shall swell with joy because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitudes of Corvettes and uh, Lamborghinis. No. <laughs> we don't need camels, do we? <laughs> but anyways... The multitudes of camels shall cover you, let your land. <laughs> In other words, we will be blessed while darkness is covering everything else. Our light's going to shine. Amen. And people will want to know who you are. That's end time watchmen. It is happening right now. Deep darkness is coming and it's going to get worse. But we will rise. As long as we stay Maintained in that position. Amen? And Daniel chapter 12. In verse 1 in the states, And at that time Daniel shall stand up the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. 
And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was seen since there was a nation. Even at that time, and at that time your people will be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book of life. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awaken. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Verse 5. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this side of the river bank and the other on the other side. And one said to the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river, How long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he held up his hand his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times, and half time. That's three and a half years. And when the power of the holy people have been completely shattered, all things shall be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, My Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from that time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days, which is around 45 days difference. In other words, what I truly believe is at this period of time, anybody who can hang tough long enough during that period of time will be raptured. So in other words, it's, he's letting us know that if, after, after he reveals himself, the, the, the abomination of desolation in the temple of God, 45 days after that, because all hell is going to start to break out then. But it says, Blessed is he who waits and comes into uh, 1,335 days. But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will rise to your inheritance at the end of the days. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. End time watchers. See, aren't we supposed to be telling people about this? Preparing them? You know how many people, when you speak about the Feast of the Lord, they don't even know about it. So they don't know about the times and events and visitations of God and fulfillments. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Everybody there? Verse 4. Somewhere around there. Second Thessalonians 2. Okay. I don't know what I got from Verse 3, let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first. We know that's happening. And it's continuing. And the, son, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God where? In the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's an abomination, isn't it? Amen. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And that's us, until we are taken out of the way, which is known as the rapture, which I believe will be 45 days after. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth. In other words, they did not believe the word of God. Amen. They did not believe in the presence of God. Does everybody understand? They are cultural Christians. That they might be what? Saved. 
And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion. These people will become more deceived that they should believe the lie unless they come out of it. That they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved, by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through the sanctification by the Spirit and believe in the truth. So that means we follow the truth. To which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, read it with me. Stand what? Fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and word. And I want to close at Isaiah 52. End time watchers. Disqualifying end time watchers. Again, we're called to it, but we got to get qualified. Amen? That means there's training, there's testing. Glory, glory. Isaiah 52 and verse 4. <clears throat> let's speak it together now it came to pass in the ninth year I'm in Jeremiah and Jeremiah was not a bullfrog oh it's way too old for you guys you got it what a name of a group, Three Dog Night. I mean, snap. <laughs> Isaiah 52, verse 4. Are we ready? <laughs> For thus says the Lord God, my people went down at first into Egypt, which is bondage, to dwell there. Then the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. <laughs> now, therefore, what have I here, says the Lord that my people are taken away for nothing? Those who rule over them make them wail, says the Lord. And my name is blasphemy continue every day. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Your watchmen shall lift up their voices. With their voices they shall sing together. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. Break forth into joy. Sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem. The Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm. In the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart, depart, come from out from among there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her and be clean. He's talking about who? Babylon. You who bear the vessels of the Lord, for you shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel shall be your what? Your rear guard. See, one of the things that people are really, it's amazing because um, everything now is, to, they're trying to promote peace. People are, the, the culture, the, the Babylon, the system, they're all trying to promote, they're willing to do, they're, they're willing to do whatever it takes to bring peace, but it's a, it's a lie. So while they're promoting peace, they're actually doing evil agendas behind it. Because the word says, they're going to say peace, peace, but then sudden destruction. So you've got religions coming together to promote peace. You've got bathrooms coming together to promote peace. Hello. you got same-sex marriages to promote peace. Does everybody understand? Now you've got a climate to promote peace. All of these things that are causing people to starve because of the rules and regulations. 
But there can be no peace until the Prince of Peace comes. Amen? So let's get qualified to become an end-time watchman. Amen? Let's, let's be serious about what God is doing. We don't want any blood on our hands. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And again, we ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace of all those things that we've done that have offended you. We ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you give us the strength to say yes to every area so that we may be qualified to be an end-time watcher. Expose the enemy's tactics as we keep an eye on you and an eye on the enemy. That we may be about your business in true spirit and power as true kingdom business, not soulish business, carnal business, or selfish business, but godly business according to your will in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed.